In this discussion, we will talk about biobanks, big data, and what student can do of if he or she is interested in scientific research projects related to these topics. So first of all, can you please all tell about yourself in a few words? Let's start with Baiba. Uh, so in a few words, I'm uh, currently the principal investigator of the bioinformatics research unit at the uh, Riga Stradinsk University. So I'm a bioinformatician. Yeah, uh, I am uh, leading HPC center uh, at Riga Technical University. Uh, we are providing uh, services for Latvian institutes for industry. And uh, uh, myself, I'm in this field uh, already for more than 10 years. And yeah, it has been a very in exciting journey. Yeah, uh, uh, building uh, HPC from scratch, actually, in Latvia. OK, thank you. And Marci, can you tell about yourself? <laughs> yeah, good morning. Happy to be here. My name is Marci Sle. My background is gastroenterology. I'm heading the Institute of Clinical and Preventive Medicine of the University of Latvia. And I have been for years interested either in cancer, in cancer prevention, and also biobanking. Thank you. OK, then let's continue about this. Uh, can you describe what is biobank and what kind of information is kept there? Uh, just to briefly give an example, in the case if you are designing a study and if you want, uh, you have the hypothesis, you are going to develop a study, if you are first of all starting then to collect potential individuals, let it be patients, to the study, so the recruitment of the patients might really take years before you are reaching the numbers that you need for the study. Even more, in the case if you want to see the outcome, maybe it could be treatment, it could be preventive measure. In this case, you might need to follow those uh, study subjects up for many years. In the other words, in the case if you only start everything from the scratch at the time that you d design a study that might take years and years before you get to the results. In the case, if the same study subjects, if those patients have been recruited before to the biobank, if their information and samples are lying in the biobank, then maybe instead of uh, many years, you might need only a couple of months to complete your study. Mm -hmm, thank you. And about big data, are there any research initiatives in the institute where this big computing power like HPC power is necessary? Uh, first of all, actually, what is, what is biobank? Biobank is uh, how you can define it very easily. It is well-documented, well-characterized character collection of samples. So it means that it's on one side samples, on the other side it's well documented information on those samples, meaning information is a big part of the biobank. Not always you need really big data, but sometimes you do. If you are speaking about uh, genetic information, if you are speaking about microbiome-related information, metabolomics, in this case definitely this will be large data. And I can mention a, a, an example currently, a project that has been started globally and is running also in Latvia. It is one million microbiomes from human project that is really very much demanding in big data, in big data collection and big data processing. Thank you for this information. Uh, Lauri, uh, as I understand, HPC means high performance computing. And it's like a very powerful computer you need when analyzing big data. Am I right? Yes, uh, really. <laughs> <laughs> HPC, it is uh, something really powerful. Actually, what is HPC? Uh, this is a computer. We sometimes call it supercomputer, which consists of uh, many uh, processing units. These are processors inside. And uh, if we have big simulation or big data analysis, yeah, we can uh, split this analysis of many, uh, on many processors and in such a way we can accelerate mm -hmm. this, this research. We can do this job faster. 
we can obtain results faster. Of course, uh, for that we need also software which is capable of using many processors, yeah, which can split this task. Uh, yeah, and uh, sometimes I'm, uh, I'm also asked uh, how powerful is our supercomputer, for example, at <laughs> RTU, and uh, uh, I can give such comparison. Uh, uh, in one day on our supercomputer, we can do th the same amount of work uh, as a regular laptop could do in a, a one and a half year. Yeah? Mm -hmm. This is on our. And uh, perhaps in uh, the biggest supercomputers in the world, you can do this, uh, the same work in one hour or one minute even, yeah? which uh, on usual computer will take year. And, and this is at the conditions that uh, this uh, computer will survive this one and a half year running this uh, the single task. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah, this, uh, and if we speak about data, yeah, this data actually has uh, exploded in Latvia in recent years and uh, uh, helps to help to uh, helps to uh, uh, genomics field yeah uh, which uh, which is also developing now very 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 uh, fast and uh, we need this supercomputer also to uh, analyze genomic data and we need it to store genomic data we need big data storage attached to to supercomputer so that this data can be taken and analyzed on supercomputer so then, uh, to summarize, yeah, m many processors, uh, parallel software, and uh, data storage and data. These are the main components now for this genomic uh, work done. And uh, yeah. Okay, it seems um, a, a little difficult for me, mm -hmm. but um, is the power of this HPC accessible only for institutes, or also uh, students can make use of it? No, actually, students are very welcome to use it, and uh, uh, maybe a little bit easier it is for students uh, who are coming from Riga Technical University because uh, no, this is an internal thing how we give them access to supercomputer. But uh, this does not limit also uh, students from other universities to uh, to do some research uh, using supercomputer because uh, students uh, sometimes are involved in s research. Students are uh, preparing their master thesis, bachelor thesis or doctoral thesis and in this case they also need to run simulations and, uh, and uh, also innovative ideas, yeah? some business ideas can be proved by supercomputer by doing simulations and, and if, uh, if students uh, come from other university, yeah, at first a student can uh, can uh, can uh, get touch with us and ask maybe this university already has contract with us and we can uh, just give a resource uh, in scope of this contract. But um, the good news is usually the we can give also the demo access, mm -hmm. which is for free. To and it's in many cases it's enough to do the uh, basic uh, things on supercomputer. Yeah, just write us email or fill out uh, application form. Maybe are there any examples working with other universities or it's new now? <laughs> no, uh, no, for example, um, I know that many students are working uh, at a Biomedical Research Center, BMC, mm -hmm. and uh, they, they, they are using our supercomputer through this uh, uh, institute, mm -hmm. yeah, because we have a good collaboration with uh, BMC. Uh, yeah, there uh, also uh, some institutes have their own uh, HPC facilities. Yeah, for example, uh, Institute of Organic Synthesis. I know that also some students uh, are working on a master thesis in this institute, and they can access then uh, this uh, computer, which is located at the institute. So there are different possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So, Bibe, as you said, you are bioinformatician. Yes. Um, can you tell us how does it relate to today's topic of biobanking? Yeah, so actually bringing uh, that, uh, the whole thing together, basically after you have created a biobank, you have collected your cohort of individuals, you have profiled their gut microbiome, genome or transcriptome, you have these huge amounts of data lying on an HPC, so what's next? 
So basically, this is where bioinformatics comes in. We are the persons who are then analyzing these huge data. As you can't use the data as it is, it has to go through several pre-processing and quality control steps. You want to um, arrive at the genetic variants or express genes or bacteria in your gut, uh, which you can then uh, link together with the clinical information, your disease phenotypes, and, and other omics data. So this is actually what we bioinformaticians are doing. Okay, like also like big work <laughs> altogether. A, a lot yes. of work, <laughs> yes. sure. So uh, the last question, but I think the most important question. Um, if um, medical, IT, or biology, or any other student understands that he or she is interested in scientific research project, where, she, uh, where he can go, uh, what he can do, and where he or she can find you. For example, um, is it possible to join one of your teams uh, and participate in current research projects? Maybe let's start with Marti. Okay, absolutely. The answer is the short answer is yes. Uh, more longer answer actually is uh, I think we have a really big beauty with the medical students that first of all medical students do need to defend their diploma work when graduating. That's equivalent to master thesis. Then. If they are undergoing, and most of them are, residentship, they have to complete the resident work. And of course, those that are more interested are continuing to the PhD studies. And all of them have to be completely with particular results, uh, meaning the work itself, and also usually the publications or presentations. We are definitely open for this collaboration. And uh, definitely, we have to discuss and see whether we can find mutual interests. I cannot guarantee that our group can cover all the medical field, definitely not, but, but uh, really many areas of the field, yes. And what usually I am recommending and what we are expecting is not just to provide some data or possibilities to complete the diploma work, but also to have a research output, mainly in the format of research publications. But it really is uh, quite big work demanding. And I should say that those that are really interested and th those are only not limited to medical students, we have experience working with biology students, with IT specialists, even with people that are graduating uh, economy, also can find their research topics in, in the medical research. Definitely all of this is open, but also, I have to emphasize that it's quite hard work and we would expect maybe more than just a graduation work from this collaboration. But for those that are interested, definitely you can find the contacts on the web page and, and contact us. Okay, thank you. So, student can find you and institute in the web page. Absolutely, yes. Okay, <coughs> thank you. Uh, Baiba, your student can find you. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, basically, we're always looking for talented and well-motivated students. Uh, but you have to be prepared that you will have to learn computer programming. And if you are, then, of course, you can also find me uh, if you just uh, search for Rigastradinsch University Bioinformatics Research Unit. Um, drop me an email and we s we'll see what we can arrange. So, most of all, they are IT students. Uh, no, no, this is the tricky thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the IT students might come as well, but these are mostly people who are then working on the algorithms, on software. Uh, but if you want to analyze the data, uh, actually, it's beneficial to have medical or uh, bio biological background, and then you have to learn computer programming on top of that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, which is probably the reason why, uh, actually, we have a huge lack of bioinformaticians um, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And Lauri? <laughs> yeah, no, th there could be uh, several c cases. Yeah? For example, if student comes from uh, uh, bioinformatics or medical field, uh, then uh, of I think that better is to join uh, some uh, team, uh, for example, Biba's team or maybe uh, Marx's team, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, 
have access to supercomputer through this team who can, can help him to, 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 to give him data as well. But uh, if the student is from IT, yeah, for example, uh, uh, then uh, if he wants to join HPC team, so we are mostly as a service providers, we work with supercomputer uh, and to join our team means that this uh, student is interested in this how supercomputer works, uh, 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 how to execute code in parallel on this supercomputer, uh, then, uh, of course, uh, he's welcome uh, <laughs> to join us. Of course, I, we cannot promise that uh, we can provide paid position in our center because for that, of course, he needs some experience and, uh, yeah, and that's maybe not so easy. But as volunteers, I think it's always welcome and uh, we can uh, uh, help with uh, some um, uh, topics for a thesis, for example, yeah, also in supercomputing field. Uh, one interesting uh, thing uh, we had last year was uh, 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 there was Baltic team of students, uh, undergraduate students, mm -hmm. who were participating in uh, HPC competition in USA Denver. The task was to build supercomputer oh there, yeah, yeah. and uh, to build very efficient supercomputer, and they were competing which supercomputer will be better. And then we had one uh, student also from RTU uh, in this uh, Baltic team, joint team. But uh, I think it would be good if we had more students coming from Latvia in mm -hmm to the, such competitions because uh, for him that was a very great experience because in Latvia we cannot learn HPC at uh, university actually yeah, we can maybe just hear about it in some study programs but not to uh, learn how to operate it and that's why yeah, it's very good that we can uh, students can have this um, experience from outside Mm -hmm. So where they can learn it, um, not in the Latvia, but can they go to you and say, Lauri, I want to learn how to, how to <laughs> do HPC. <laughs> well, <laughs> then this will be the same long journey as for me. <laughs> ah, <okay. laughs> because uh, most of people in Latvia who, who are working in this field uh, started uh, from scratch, started uh, learning themselves and uh, going around the world uh, to conferences, to sc uh, summer schools and in mm -hmm. uh, this way we obtain our knowledge of course now we can also already give this knowledge to students yeah mm -hmm. uh, but if, if i can supplement i think the job lauris is doing is really essential because uh it's not only latvia i was for 13 years in germany and we couldn't find a good linux systems administrator because at the end of the day if you can't manage the system if you can't do this uh, all the tasks you described you're actually lost with all your huge server, your huge biobank, all your di data lying around, you can't proceed. So if people are interested in becoming such Linux systems administrators, I think it's a good, uh, really good starting point to, to learn it for, for biology, for our demands, to learn it with, with Lauris, if Lauris agrees, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also always say to students that it is good to learn Linux nowadays, because Linux is uh, not only in supercomputers, it's in uh, different devices around us, yeah, on the mm -hmm. routers and, uh, <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, different small devices. And do you agree about... <laughs> <laughs> what I can add I uh, to, to this is that really by banking and data management and data storage and processing definitely they are very much interlinked uh, specialities and and there's definitely need for all of this in particular in latvia i think that we have too little uh, bioinformaticians absolutely if to compare to other countries we probably have not enough space for data storage and also processing so but it's a great possibility to build this up yeah that's true and we also need those people who are between supercomputer and scientific field for example Baiba I think is one of these people who understands now both sides a little bit one understand. side very good <laughs> and other side also <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to really think interdisciplinary. It's the, the times have changed. Now you have these big teams. Um, actually, with all these data security issues, you have to uh, have people from the field of ethics and um, um, lawyers as well. Mm -hmm. um, the projects are, are more complex than they used to be, so to say. So it's an open field for students. You're waiting to them to learn and join your team.
Right. Yes. Okay. Maybe there's something else you want to uh, tell or add something. No. Okay. Join thank us. you for <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope you will have a good and interesting day. Thank you.